All right, hello, uh, podcast. Here's what I want to discuss today. I'm actually recording this while driving. This is probably not legal. Or maybe it is legal. I'm not sure. I, it's hands-free. I'm doing that. I mean, I don't, have a, I don't have a boom mic. I'm not holding a boom mic on myself. That'd be weird. But uh, I'm also right now blocking an intersection. That's great. And the person who I'm blocking is a Volvo, and I feel bad about that because I admire Volvos. I feel like the Volvo is my spirit animal. I really do. I feel like... I just like what the Volvo represents. I feel like if a Volvo could talk, it would say, Why haven't you done your taxes yet? Well, I still have a month. It doesn't matter. Do it in February. Get it done. Volvo. Get it done. I'm seeing... I passed by this restaurant... And it, it said it has authentic pizza. And I'm seeing this all over the place. Restaurants, it has authentic Mexican food. Authentic, authentic. And I'm getting... I mean, real, uh, authentic pizza, what's... What is not authentic pizza? I think pizza... Is, is it circular? Is there cheese on it and sauce? Pizza, that's good enough. I think you walk into a restaurant and you say, you know, I don't think that's authentic pizza. Why not? Well, well, first of all, it was in a bowl. And second, it was just lettuce and croutons and Thousand Island dressing. Well, that sounds like a salad. I know, but they called it a pizza. They can't do that. I know they can't do that, and yet they did. So from now on, it's only authentic pizza. From now on. If there's not that word authentic in it, I don't trust it. Trying to uh, currently drive to the Cedar sinai Medical Center where I'm going in uh, to check for my spastic bladder. We're checking. We're checking for the spastic bladder to make sure it's no longer spastic or less spastic. I've got my P log. For two non-consecutive days, I had to measure my pee. And that's... I don't know. I think for me it got sad when it got to be routine. That's what freaked me out. And now I have to concentrate here on where exactly I'm going. Alright, i got to turn on to La Cienega. I don't know if I should be telling you exactly where I'm at in this podcast for the fear of somebody tracking me down. Oh, and I'm seeing these, um, these, new, these new electronic scooters. So I was walking. I went on a two-hour walk in Glendale. Uh, I like to call it a hike because uh, I would say in Los Angeles, if it's not Beverly Hills, everything else is just nature. It's wilderness. That's what I consider it. To my, Cerritos is a, is, a, uh, is a forest. That's what I view it. As. And so I was walking for two hours and I was thinking, you know, I really could use one of those scooters and I couldn't find one. So I'm, I need to do some research, but I, where do they decide to deposit them? And why didn't they deposit them where I needed them? Or if I do I have an app, if I push a button on my phone, will a scooter suddenly appear? I feel like we're getting to that point. But, uh, yeah, so I had to do a P-log. Let's go back to the P-log. Let's discuss this. And what, it, what that involves is I have to measure my urine and record it on a sheet of paper. And I, the cup they give me. They give me a cup. All right, let's talk about this P-cup. It's got measurements on it, but I can barely read it. So I'm squinting and I'm, I'm holding up a full cup of urine trying to get it in the right light so that I can see how much I've just peed and if it's kind of a full cup I mean I it's and I uh, tilt it the wrong way there's going to be a urine problem here you're in trouble if you will they need to make those pee cups easier to read I mean, what, the, the, it's, 
like it's, I guess it's it's just they they engrave it into the not engrave it, but they kind of form it into the cup. And it need can it be ne it needs to be neon. I don't want to take ten minutes holding my own urine trying to figure out how much is in the cup. I want to I want to do this as quickly as possible so I can wash my hands and not think about the fact that I was holding my own urine in my hand. Please, thank you. Let's fix this pee cup situation. Uh, I believe it's taken me an hour to get to, from Burbank to Cedar Sinai. And I could be wrong, but I think I think they're only a mile away. That's what it feels like. And naturally now I need to make a right Oh, okay, good. It's, I can still make the right turn. The lane was closed because it's a very busy intersection. And so why why have all the lanes open? Why do that? Why do that to anyone? Why help? That should that's that's the slogan for California, for Los Angeles. Why help? Why should we help? Bring it. Los Angeles. What do you well what are you going to contribute? So, uh, good. We've covered peeing. We've covered the authentic problem. I saw another place I drove by. It was a waffle place. And it said, we have America's best waffles. Voted. It was voted number one, number one waffles in America. And I have not tried the waffles. I have no idea what the quality of the waffles are. But I find it difficult to imagine that any respectable organization could conceivably come up with a rubric or a way to determine which waffles in America were the best. First of all, someone or a group of people would have to actually test all waffles. All waffles in America. How many, we don't need, how, how do we even know how many waffles there are? This would be a, this would be, this would cost, okay, first of all, to just get someone to pay them. Assuming you pay someone minimum wage to research all of the places in America, and I'm assuming they include Hawaii and Alaska that serve waffles. So first of all, you need a list of all of the places in America that serve waffles which I, I would imagine hun- hundreds of thousands, perhaps even a million restaurants, just as a, as a gross estimate. So then, you've got to actually go around to all of those different places And taste the waffles. And then, there again, what constitutes a best waffle? What's the... I want to know what the... What are you measuring? Is it the... Is it just taste alone? Is it the taste and the appearance of the waffles? Who is... Who has the right? Who has the right to say what waffles are best? And what has that person or that entity done to give them the right to say that they have the world's best waffles. There's a lot of problems with this. There's a lot, a tremendous amount of problems with this concept of waffle, of, of the best waffles. And I think they're, you know, that's a pretty, it's a pretty, that, that takes a lot of guts, it takes a lot of chutzpah, it takes a lot of huevos to say that. What I'm hoping happened is that the owner of the restaurant just printed something that said, we have the best waffles in America, voted best waffles in America, and just put it up. Because at the end of the day, other than sad people like me, who's going to double check that? Who's going to go in and go, well, all right, what organization said you had the best waffles? I need to see some paperwork on that. Yeah, exactly. Nobody. That's right. I think we accomplished a lot with this podcast. 
Sorry I've been away for the two people in England who listen to this.